Trauma, deceit, and relationships. Everything is not as it appears to be in the second episode of the Apple TV series Drops of God. The complex notes of Wine's relationship with nature and how humans interpret it shows that there is more than just what's on the surface. And today on this tasting of The Road Goes Ever On and On, we are going to cleanse our palates to pull out the complexity of this episode. To get all the complexities out of our channel, please hit that like and subscribe button and turn on that bell for notifications. Full disclosure, spoilers ahead, and with that, let's talk about the opening. Serling, what do you think about the opening? You know, I, I thought it was pretty interesting how this episode and the last episode, the opening and closing have kind of been bookends, and I thought it was pretty interesting how the closing would add new information, show the same scene as we kind of saw in the opening, and add some new information that gave you a completely different perspective on it. You know, when we watched the first episode, I think Alexander seemed uh, like a pretty mean person to his to his daughter. And then at the end, when we see how excited she is to do this tasting, we see... No, it's just, you know, once he starts this whole setup, he puts her into a focused mode and he's being stern with her in order to help her kind of focus. But it's not because he's a mean person and she loves it, you know, and in this one we saw we we see what we think finally got them separated that, you know, we think Alexander gave her wine to drink and he's how how much of this has he been you know, doing, who knows? And then we find out that, no, he's been training her on, on tasting and he's been very careful about it using, like, a pipette in order to make sure that only a tiny amount can kind of get in there and having her rinse and spit immediately so that she can't really get any of that in. So he's being very methodical about it, but that fight distracts him and in that moment that's when she kind of drinks so i thought that was kind of interesting that whole idea of take something that looks one way and then show it again after giving information and it just completely changes it yeah i i had a feeling it, we weren't getting the full information when i saw her just chug the whole glass of wine i never got that vibe that that's what alexander was doing with her but I, you know, I think that we did get a little bit of a confirmation as well about the mom's role in Camille and Alexander's relationship. We saw that, you know, after she's been having this terrible condition where she has the nosebleeds, memory loss, we see that the mom basically took her away and it seems like Alexander was trying to reach out to Camille for a while and that the mom kept blocking it, uh, blocking contact with him. And then we, you know, eventually saw like we got an answer why she didn't, she didn't drink that wine when she turned 18. And it was right. because that her mom wrote a letter in her name. And I, I thought that was devastating, you know, that's that's actually the exact word that I was going to to use for that because that that was a real gut punch, you know, to find out that he hasn't been an absentee father this whole time. You know, it, it kind of gave me the impression that Camille's mom probably had issues with Alexander and used this more like an excuse to be able to separate them. You know, I right. they they were having fights previous to this. I think he was down on his luck. I think that there, you know, because when we see him, he's unshaven, his hair looks kind of uh, tussled, you know, he looks like, he, he looks like things aren't going great for him. We hear that Camille's bedroom in Japan was small, so he didn't have a ton of money then. So I don't think that he was the man that we kind of see at the beginning of the first episode of being this extremely wealthy man who's grown this huge wine career. I think we see him at a point where he is struggling in his career and we see him struggling with his marriage. Right. And working on the one thing that he can do well and, and working on it with somebody who is, you know, has, has an incredible palate. 
Well, and I think also part of it is that he did have so much love and care for Camille that, you know, that we see, I think, in this early development of her. And to go and see that, you know, he was basically denied that love. Like, I think his, like, two passions and two loves of life were Wine and Camille. And he was, he had, like, the best of both worlds where he got to enjoy wine with Camille and like with her you know amazing palette like his palette he was able to help sculpt her and you know we see that she talks about when she's she's learning to smell and and trying to remember how to do it we see that he was the one that set up her mind palace that he was the one that like told her like take the categories each you know grab each category for every smell and, and put them in subcategories and subcategories if if you have to and you know we see while she's in her mind palace we see this very like broken down home almost like a hoarder's home where it seems like nothing is oh, yeah. in order you know as she's pulling out there's the like sense. vines going through the windows yeah it's like her mind palace from like when we saw it in the the first episode where she's in this like pristine forest and she can walk up to each thing and and smell it and taste it and she knows where this is like you know she opens the book and the the peach is in the book the honey's you know the right. toast comes out of the the comes out of the clock comes out of the clock so like yeah. nothing nothing is where it is like it's like a tornado and went into her mind even when it is getting organized it's still not you can see that it's in the early stages of organization and so like the the shelves are different heights you know so even at that stage it doesn't look like it's great so you can see that it's getting more o organized over time and it's kind of cool seeing that evolution from this place that's absolutely in shambles to a place that looks more like you know a nice library with still towards the end we still can see a few boxes that have been you know haven't been unpacked right but it looks pretty well organized you know the room is in good good condition shelves are in good condition it's it was a really kind of interesting way to to show that process of accessing and organizing memories now it seems that fern causes this explosion in her mind you know, we see when she recognizes the fern from the test and then when she tastes it or smells it again and she gets hit with a, a, a blast of that, that powder and color. What do you think that is? I think that's when she can't pinpoint it. I think that that is, you know, it the, the, the color kind of expresses the type of thing that it is. You know, it's in that kind of blue-green spectrum of, of being... Uh, a fern and she's being hit by it but she can't quite tell what it is and so i think that's just kind of a way of of showing that that's so when we see that it's the same pop of color it's like that's that thing i don't know what it is but i just got hit with it again and then i think once she knows it then i don't think it's necessarily going to be that pop so i think gotcha. we'll you know so yeah. so when she did the tasting for the the test and then the explosion hit her in the face you think that was just because she just didn't she knew them but like couldn't pick them out so it was just like a, a rush of of everything in ex yeah in in the test it was like a rush of everything and so you saw it was a a bunch of different colors right you know so it's like she was being just inundated with so many different aromas that she couldn't identify any of them you know, everything was just kind of a, a, a blur and kind of mixing together. And then as she's starting to do the, the training, we see that pop of just blue again. Right. So she realizes, like, I know that, like, I smell that smell in that wine. I don't know what it is, but I remember smelling that, you know. So they show the exact same symbol to, to kind of show us, like, oh, that was from that wine. And now once she, you know, she asks him what it is and he says, oh, it's Fern. And then boom, that lets her know that's Got in the it. wine. So I had thought like, you know, when we in this episode, it definitely talks about that she has 
a trauma, you know, for scent and taste and specifically to alcohol. And so I was wondering if Fern, because of the way that it was presented to me, I thought that that the Fern was part of that that trauma and not the what how you explain that where she didn't know it and then she figures it out. I think she I think her 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 mind palace got dusty from not being used. Right. And so she wasn't able to quite reference things the way that that she was before because she should have probably known Fern, but it'd just been a long time and at this point on on top of that, you know, it's just it's it's getting hit with everything kind of all at once. And she has memory loss. So that's another it, reason yes. why she can't have the exact pinpoints. Yeah, it, it seems like almost everything from a certain point, you know, in her younger life, it seems like it's almost all swallowed up and, and completely gone. And it, it it is definitely starting to come back. I think that we are going to have more of these moments where something else is going to get resurfaced from her past that she's going to remember that could kind of change how we perceive things. I don't think that we've seen all of her memories flood back and that she's necessarily remembered everything. As a sommelier, I want to know your opinion on what we saw in this episode. Yeah. Okay, so there, there's a, a, a mix here. So overall, I love the, the show. I love the kind of overall representation of wine, making it somewhat more accessible, getting more people into it, having a show kind of involved in it to kind of get some of the, the language out there. So overall, happy with it. I think one of the things that they've done best in this show is kind of show how wine is an amalgamation of so many things. You know, I love the description of wine being a combination of earth, sky, and people. And in that example, when he's talking about how these pudding stones have been washed down, you know, from the Rhone River, and that the the warmth that's absorbed into them radiates back into the vines at nighttime, and right. that's what makes this you know area special and affects these wines you really can kind of see how the the land can affect the the wine how the people their choices can affect the the wine and so i did think it did a very good job of kind of showing that you know i like the idea of him taking her to a remote vineyard and giving her a taste of wine and saying this is from this vineyard and she says i can't pick anything up from it and then he just tells her to go in the vineyard and you know, it's at, at that point, she's able to really kind of connect the the soil, the, the plants, everything that's there, you know, is going into the bottle. So I, I definitely thought that that was kind of a good representation. I would say that their, their, their focus on how they do deduction in tasting, and in particular, how much they focus on smell is not a great representation so you know I'll, I'll keep this short but i think that one of the big kind of takeaways here is that you generally don't jump to a conclusion early in tasting you generally go through the entire process including the tasting before you say anything you know in in this show we see them looking at wine and starting to make some calls about it you know oh well this is a full-bodied wine this wine is young this is, you know, probably about this many years old. And and they're already kind of making these judgments. And then they start, uh, you know, smelling it. And they start making additional kind of judgments. Wine is more, wine tasting is, is more of um, kind of a puzzle where you really need big picture to understand what the details may mean. You know, so while the the color, like, is it, moving towards that orange color that is indicative of age. So we're aware that there's some kind of age on this, but different grapes made different way, age kind of in different cadences. So we probably need to smell it and then taste it in order to maybe have an idea of what grape or grapes are inside of it and how it was made so that then we can understand, okay, well, this is a, a wine that can age really well and so I think that because of that, and based off of how much color I'm seeing, it is a much older wine versus this one. You know, there are some grapes like Nebbiolo that will start to show those kind of orange 
early on. And if you just jump right into, ooh, I'm seeing tinges of orange, this is an older wine. No, it could actually be a young Nebbiolo. So you generally want to do the whole picture and not jump to any conclusions and then start putting all of the puzzle pieces together and say, okay, because I saw this color, because I smelled this, because I noticed this level of acid and this much tannin, I can kind of start to say, I think it's this. And using that information, I can now draw conclusions about age and, you know, quality and all of these other kind of, of aspects. So, but I, I get that that would be a much tougher sell right. of having to go through the entire process. So I get it. You know, they're they're making it much more exciting. They're They're making it, you know... Because when, when they're doing this, it is kind of high-paced. There's fast-paced music going on. Right. It's making it kind of thrilling, which is interesting that they're taking subject matter that I would think would normally be, I don't want to say boring, but not thrilling <laughs> subject matter. Right, right, right. Wine tasting. And they're actually making it pretty exciting stuff. So if they imbue excitement into it and they have to, you know, take some, you know, do, do some bending of truth, I'm, I'm okay with that. I did really like when they pulled out the smelling kit because that reminded me of the time when you were first learning and we were living together and you had your whole kit out. We would smell them and we would try to guess, you know, whether it was stone fruit, grass, pepper. Like I, I had a blast with that. And I thought that that they showed, you know, like that small aspect that I know, I thought they showed pretty well. The one thing I right. did like about the smell was I feel like, you know, this was this episode was very much about smell, right? We saw that Camille was really focusing on her olfactory senses in this one. We saw, you know, and we see that she lacks confidence in it, right? Her, she, in the beginning, she's not confident at it. You know, her mind palace is a mess. Where we look at Issei, who's like trying to apply for this job, and he's like, you know, please hire me. And they're like, oh, no, you don't have anything under your belt. Like, you're you're too young. And he's like, give me the test. And he's able to right. identify the whole wine just with smell. He, You know, I know that you say that that's not really how you do it. But he basically, you know, just does with the smell. And he's able to pinpoint the exact wine, the year, uh, grape, state, vintage, and... And it sounds like he doesn't doesn't get the job. Yeah, he's he's really <clears throat> getting hit hard in this episode, and it, it is kind of it it does hurt to see somebody. Th you know what this this actually feels kind of like what I think Alexander might have been going through when oh. when he was training his daughter, because. Alexander seemed down on his luck and he seemed like he obviously had a ton of knowledge. I I think that that might be why he took this student on is because he could see so much of himself in right. Issei. You know, somebody who his family isn't believing him, you know, just like Alexander's wife is, is not necessarily uh, believing in him, right. you know, that understands that, that has that drive, that kind of passion that level of dedication, you know, we really see Issei putting, even though Issei has limited resources, you know, he doesn't have the access to be able to travel all over the world. So he's right. leaned on a friend that's traveling the world to give him those soils and then using that to catalog those and and smell them and right. then take detailed notes on, on what they're like. So it's, it's interesting how much he's doing from this shack and right. how really passionate he is about wine. I do think there is something interesting. This is, may just be a wild guess, and I be, may be way off on this. Okay. But I did think that there was something interesting in Issei's you know, shack, as the grandfather called it, when he was right. being kind of... I shouldn't call it a shack because... That was Issei trying to be mean to his grand, or Issei's grandson be, trying to be mean to him right. and demeaning to you know what he's doing. But there was two desks in uh, Issei's office, and one of them was just covered in stuff. I, I you know I, I don't want to kind of assign gender roles, but it seemed like a lot of feminine type kind of things. You know there was 
nail polish. There were feminine and or younger things. There was like nail polish. There were like plush toys. The the desk was kind of covered in this. And we see the, the three notes with the last one being, you know, you have a package here. Uh, the, the first or second was saying that this person couldn't come to the office because their cat was sick. Um, and so it it seems like, one, there's somebody else in the office because this, these right. obviously Issei is not leaving himself notes. Two, they took enough time to put a lot of detail into all of the things that are on this person's desk, which seems a little wasteful unless they've fleshed this person out. So I think this person can come in, may come into the show later. I was thinking it was going to be, you know, Issei's friend. But my wife, Dawn, pointed out something kind of interesting. You know, we had, I had said that I thought that Issei was focused on his wine stuff and not interested in dating. But she kind of said, after I told her this theory, she said, you know, what if, what if this is a person that Issei is interested in? And maybe that's why Issei isn't interested in his parents trying to set him up with, you know, people of status. Because right. that seems important to Issei's family, is you probably have to be in a relationship with somebody of status. And this may be the type of person that Issei's family would never let him be with. There's, I'm making two or three jumps based off of a desk covered in stuff. But I, I thought it was kind of an interesting interesting thought to kind of follow out to a to an end yeah so okay so if you think Issei is into this girl we did see a little bit of another love triangle i think that we will see more of this season where it seems like camille's old childhood friend thomas she seems very interested but we see that thomas is dating jeanette i think her name's jeanette and I could see like a little awkwardness there where it seems like she might fall in love with him. Now, depending on how many seasons this show could be, we could see, you know, her going after Thomas, Issei having this relationship with this lower class girl. And then, you know, in a couple seasons, we see Issei and Camille. Do you think that Issei and Camille will get together or do you think it's going to be these offshoots? I, th I think the, uh, maybe, maybe in a future season I could see something like that, but I think, uh, I don't think in this season, um, me personally, I'm not a huge fan of, of the constant bouncing around between yeah. in shows, Same. you know, so I'm okay with a little bit of tension from one love triangle but not, you know, just like a every few episodes, you know, it's now now it's this person, now it's this person, right. now it's this person, you know, and there's awkwardness that that ensues from that. I will say after you bringing up the the desk with the knickknacks and the the way that they were, I I do believe that they are going to make that more of a relationship than what I thought previously of Camille and Issei. I mean, at the very least, I think we will meet this other person. And maybe they're just, you know, somebody that helps Issei out. But yeah. I did kind of like that angle of, you know, this would be the, the type of person that Issei can't be with because of his family. Right. Um, and family seems very... Making sure that you are making the family looks good right. seems very important. You know, this job is beneath the family. It, it even seems like... I don't know how well the the parents really get along. Issei's parents, you know, was maybe right. that was arranged. Well, yeah, because um, it, it seems like the the dad was like it, it. It does seem like the mom has a little like a stick up her butt or something because the dad was like, "Hey, I want to do something nice for you. I want to take you out to dinner, just the two of us." And, you know, I wanted it to be a surprise, but you hate surprises and you, your schedule is always busy. Like, can we do this? And she basically is just like, yeah, I'll put it in my schedule. I did, right. I did really like how they, they, sh with the offices, you know, that we were talking about Issei's office, we see his parents' office and it's like 
a stark contrast different like we see her his mom's office which is all like you know big sky level building very you know very nice desk very nice decorations like a giant single office to herself same with the grandpa who owns the company has this beautiful office and you know back to Issei shack you know we see that it doesn't seem as well built it seems that you know there's a train that's going by so he's like not in a desirable area and i thought that you know that was a very nice way to contrast like the two different lifestyles of his family and him right and even his dad works in the the company and Issei's dad is in a joint office with like two other people so it was interesting when the two of them you know rode up the elevator together and then split you see Issei's dad's place first right and then you see the the mom's office and it's like holy crap that's that's a really nice office you know it seemed like where Issei does his studying I don't think that belongs to the the company and I don't think that's the kind of building that would bring honor on them you know so that's like he probably had to find that on his own that might be why he's um you know cutting costs and you know renting a place from his parents you know and not trying to get his own car he got one from from his grandfather he figures like i'll just use this he shares an office right yeah yeah so I, i think he's just kind of um very very focused you know i was wondering if we've got very little time for camille to to, to get ready for this test. And we see that kind of ticking down. Right. We even see she's a finally able jump. To, right. She's she's finally able to taste at the end, but that's she has, what, one, one week left maybe at that point? You know, so how right. much knowledge can you really get? I was kind of thinking that at this point, you know, we've, we've seen based off the tastings with the dad and when that notebook was open and he had wines written down you know including estate and vintage that it's possible that she's gotten almost enough of her training just from her dad alone right to kind of be able to pull this off you know and at this point they the others are kind of filling in the gaps and maybe you know filling in some of the things that have been missed over time but i think that honestly i think her her dad might have given her enough of a foundation that it's kind of like brushing off that and then building the last bit kind of on top of it because otherwise it seems like a herculean task of how could anybody accomplish it in this amount of time right and you would think that as alexander sets up the test like he clearly wanted his daughter to be a part of this test so i feel like she has all the knowledge of the tests in her already just because of the memory loss because of the condition she has it's in there it's just buried and you know before she couldn't drink and now finally we see at the end that she can drink right so it does seem like maybe the next episode we might do kind of what we did with this one with the the smelling but more focused on the taste and the the notes aspect of it yeah and that would that would definitely be nice to to get into that part because i mean once again they're 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 bending some things but i i think they have done a pretty good job of kind of showing the process of you know we do look at a wine first you know we are careful to note a bunch of characteristics maybe we shouldn't be jumping to conclusions but you know, we what they're noting is is generally kind of the right things. You know, then we move on to smell, and I do like how much time they they spend on smell. You know, because I don't think that a lot of people realize how important smell is. You know, the right. the tongue can only taste five things. Everything else that you think you taste when you put something in your mouth is those are aromatic particles that are going up your retronasal passageway, you know, being caught on those, those like hair, like cilia in your nose. And then your brain just does a really good job of taking that kind of information from your nose of aromas and the stuff you get in your mouth, you know, like 
but you the sweet, sour, salty, bitter umami, um, and then combining it to make it seem like it's one taste that's coming from your mouth. But really, a, the majority of that is happening in here, in your nose. Interesting. And then it's just being, your brain is combining all of that. So, so I do like how much time they're spending on that. We just, once again, don't want to jump to conclusions. You know, so right. you can pick out all these notes, but it's like, wait, wait until you've got it in your mouth and you evaluate those last parts and then we can start combining all the, the puzzle pieces. I will say I was a little confused with the domain because it did make it seem like the domain was in Japan at first because, you know, he was like, please stay, you know, like while we were in Tokyo, like stay for the test, like please stay for the test and you can go to the domain. You spent your summers there. What it makes me feel like though, we, I mean, we did get confirmation. It, I think it's in France and, yes. and, and, so it seems like she grew up in Tokyo and spent her summers at the Domain in, in France. Yeah. Philippe said, you know, you spent every summer here, you know, 10 years of your life or something like that. You right. know, so so I think that was where they were going in, in summertime. And I think that was one of those situations where maybe he was, he didn't have the resources himself. So he was leaning on a friend to kind of help him immerse in the the wine world and that is a, a beautiful place to immerse yourself in the wine world it's if, if uh you know for anybody in the audience who hasn't had a chance to go to uh a winery and like really touch the land meet the people it is it, it completely changes the way that you think about wine and so i i thought that I thought that this was a pretty cool way of kind of showing that off. So I really did enjoy that. And I think that, you know, seeing them interact with this beautiful landscape right. reminds me of, of so many of, of my favorite wine trips, you know, where I've gotten to get into the winery and get into the vineyards and really, really amazing stuff. I did like how they showed the, you know, th this winery that is owned by... Philip, Philip, Philippe, Philippe, Philippe. Uh, Philippe, and everything that goes into it, you know, we see different behind the scenes parts where there's all the, you know, the casks that have, you know, the wine that's fermenting. And I, you know, you see that there's like the, the big rooms where they probably transfer the wine. And, and I thought it was neat to see that aspect of it. You know, when you think of like a wine vineyard you you only think of oh here's where the grapes grow and then here's the tasting area and you know if you don't have that that background knowledge you don't go see the inner workings of what it takes and i, I you know they didn't go too deep in it in this episode but it was cool seeing it in the background yeah and they i think they they did a good job of showing you know the the effort involved you know at, in a lot of the scenes you could see a lot of people working. You know, there were right. people in the fields at, at almost all times. There were people hand sorting the grapes because you don't want every grape that comes in to make it into the bottle. Some of them could have disease. Some of them could, you know, not have completely ripened, you know, so you want to sort those where they get pressed. You see all the people that are cleaning the equipment. Hygiene is so important in right. this. Otherwise, it's so easy for bacteria to take over and spoil your wine. So I, I do think that they showed that this was something that involved a lot of hands to kind of get this done. Yeah. And this, this definitely seemed a very hands on kind of process where the, the people make the choices and the people are involved in things, but at, at some ends of it, there are crazy things that they've got. So I, I thought it was interesting seeing the sorting table, you know, and you've got people picking through the, the grapes um, at some of the most high-end wineries, they've got multi-million dollar sorting table where the, the grapes go down a slide, hit a ramp, so it shoots them in the air. There are lasers and imaging sensors that are able to detect the exact size of the grapes within, you know, fractions of a millimeter to be able wow. to see the color, to see if there's 
you know, disease, anything, you know, if they're not ripe, anything along those. So you can put in all these parameters of like, I want them to be this, you know, diameter. I want them to be this color, not have any of this going on. And then there are these air jets that can, because all of these lasers can detect where all of these grapes are, can shoot any specific grape out of the air so it doesn't get to the other side. So wow. that only it's <laughs> wine. There's there's a lot of, of really cool stuff with with wine, but but it is interesting seeing the different process of like you know hand doing that, you know having this laser sorting right. table. Um, it it really brings back some some great memories of of being in wineries. You know we we talked about memories do you, and and seeing things in different perspectives. Do you think that we'll see? this method throughout the the series like we'll always open with something and or do you think we'll kind of transition over time to other things it depends story you know episode to episode i i do feel like we they have set it up in a very intriguing way of how they're telling the story of you know this is what you see at first and then there's a little bit more context added to it i like that but i you know i felt like what we found out this this episode it seemed like that was going to be kind of drawn out through the whole season of you know why did alexander be the way he was you know why did but i feel like we got our <clears throat> main answer you know right away about that you know the mom had a lot to do with it you know, she wrote a terrible email to him. So, you know, I, I do feel like there are things that we still have to discover. You know, he says, uh, Philippe says that his father ha or her father had a revenge against the world. So we might right. see things like that, like why he why he feels like the world has slighted him. But I'm not and I'm sure because. Camille has lost so many memories. There will be things that we see. Like we might get the understanding of where this condition that she has come from. So I, I really hope that they do that, uh, but I'm not sure how they would do that. Or I, I don't even know what they will do. Cause yeah. Yeah. I, I thought, I thought it was pretty interesting how a lot of things that I thought were going to be pretty central for a good period of time were so quickly resolved right which very much intrigues me because it means that they've there are other things that are a longer game for them right you know that i'm not even really aware of you know i i kind of felt when i was describing this to a friend that i was possibly giving a little too much away and i stayed away from the fact that she can't taste wine you know otherwise she has nosebleeds because i thought you know i don't want to ruin anything from the the show that could be a big thing and and then it turns out that that some of these things are we learned about them in the first episode and then right. resolved so quickly which really has me intrigued about what's next how do right. they keep this exciting you know once again this is a subject matter that doesn't feel like it should be almost thrilling right and yet it almost feels like that you know it, it feels like it is it feels like it's in a genre that it it shouldn't be in, but right. it's it's killing it. It's so I'm I'm enjoying that. Yeah, I would say I am really enjoying the acting. I am enjoy enjoying the the set pieces that we've seen. Uh, I feel like the the production value, the writing is is really good. Like, and that was the other thing you were mentioning that her nose bleeds and that. You know, we don't know exactly what the cause is, and we might learn that. We just know that it's from trauma, and it does seem that it wasn't trauma induced by Alexander. But like that was another question that we had of like she has this complication with wine, and that seems to have already resolved itself as well. So, I I right. do I'm excited to see like with this next episode if there are more questions or more, you know, like. I, I do feel like we're gonna get more from the past that will will fill us in on things. And I think with that that there's only going to be 
one way to find out what happens in the next episode, and that is to watch it and then join us next week as we break down the third episode in this great wine-based drama, Drops of God. I'm Sterling. This is Mark. We are Road Goes Ever On and On, and thank you so much for joining. Thanks a lot.